Hi, this is Paula from CHE. This afternoon, we talked with Sherigan Counselor Alfred Poirier about foreign workers coming to town to work at the fish plant. We know that the local radio, CKGM, did a great interview and show earlier today, and we wanted to add to that by doing an English interview with Councillor Poirier. We tried to do a virtual video conversation, but unfortunately we couldn't connect, so we ended up doing a phone interview. Here's what Alfred Poirier had to say about the issue that's been causing anxiety in our community. You know that people in the community are worried about foreign workers coming here to Sherry Camp to work at Sherry Camp Fisheries, the, the local fish plant. What do you think about the situation? Well, I think the situation, as I said this morning on CKGM, is uh, a very serious uh, uh, issue for our people, for our medical team, home care, and especially, you know, if, as we know, if we move along and uh, COVID-19 is, you know, is starting to spread out across the, the province. How is the municipality involved in this matter? The municipality, as a matter uh, right now, we brought it up to a meeting and I told them, my position as the councillor for District 1, where I'm the councillor for Shetty Camp, Pleasant Bay and Mead Cove. I told them exactly how I felt, that I felt that it was uh, a serious problem that we had. And not only that, because I had worked with a lot of other people, with the coalition, to get the 14 days isolation, you know, in process so that, you know, to provide more security to our community. But uh, like uh, now, as we move along, uh, it is getting, uh, fishing is, is getting on, is ready to go. And also, what is happening? We're going to have more traffic. We're going to have more wharf uh, uh, people working, fish plant workers, and everything. So it, it is a very touchy situation, to be honest with you, and uh, touchy and scary. So, do you think that it's enough if workers come in and they isolate for fourteen days? Do you think that's enough? Well, it's enough in a way, but at the same time. It's going to depend on the working condition in the in the plant itself, which I was told that there would they would be six feet apart and uh, working, you know, uh, according to the regulations put in by the premier and uh, Dr. Strand. But the point is, is that it's not only the fish plant. I think it's also you know, people were, uh, you know, were scared that, pe you know, fishermen working in a crowd, you know, in a boat, it's pretty crowded and it's very hard to keep six feet apart. So that was a concern too, you know, so, uh, but at the same time, it, it is, uh, it, like uh, Mr. Bourgeois said this morning, it is a federal uh, issue, you know, we can, uh, I definitely had uh, uh, work with it. We work with uh, Mike Kellaway. I, uh, but uh, you know, it's one of those things that uh, if the government opens the fishery, it is it's up and running. That's it. Unless what happens, how can we change that? It's you know, I would like to have the solution, but I can't. I don't have it, and nobody else does. You were speaking about a letter that you wrote to Pierre Leblanc, who's the owner of Sherry Camp Fisheries. That's right. Why did you write that letter? And what does it say? I did it because of uh, the security problem, health problem that can occur into, into our community. It's very simple, you know. But at the same time, if we... Uh, you know, if we don't do anything, 
You try everything in your... It didn't work. It did work for the 14 days isolation. Will it work for the fisheries? We're fighting the government. We're, fi we're fighting a big, uh, a big machine. So, uh, but uh, there's all kinds of ways that we can try, but we have to do it in a very, uh, you know, easy going way and uh, a united way around uh, the community. So, would you say that your position is that you would prefer foreign workers not to come? Well, I mean, I, I, you know, as far as the workers themselves, and, uh, you know, it is for the security of the community. It's very simple, you know, like uh, uh, there's no, there's no other, other answers to your question. The question is, how, how can we try to keep our, our community safe from the virus coming into our neighborhood? That's, that's the question. People are scared. And uh, I'll have, uh, you know, I'll explain later on, you know, in the letter and other, another letter that I approved and uh, that uh, I'm really looking for the best of Shetty Camp and surrounding areas for uh, the, the, the closure of that plan. But I was talking to Pierre Leblanc. He knows himself. It is uh, one of those things that he doesn't have any control over. Because fisheries, uh, and all, you know, if the, the fishery goes in, the 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 main, the owner of the fish plant here in Chedicam are from Champlain. So if everybody goes out and uh, they're being told to go out and process the fish, that's the way it will be. That's something that we don't have any control over, unless there's only one person that we have to talk to that we have to make a, a point to and it is the minister of fisheries and that would be bernadette jordan so uh, you know we're we're very uh, limited how we can cope with the problem that we have would you like to go ahead and read the letter now well, sure. And, uh, okay, the letter, the letter was uh, written on April the 9th, 2020, of course. Dear, dear Pierre Leblanc, the county of Inverness is feeling unprecedented time due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The province of Nova Scotia is in a state of emergency and residents are being asked to stay home and make, maintain social distancing. There is a frightened awareness throughout the county of the potential of COVID-19 to easily spread within communities. If we all do not work together to safeguard the health of our families, friends and neighbors as you are sure you are aware that many people are anxious of the current situation to say the least as a resident of shady camp and the counselor for district one i know firsthand that people are very stressed about covid 19 impacting our community i have received many calls and emails from residents worried about their health and the health of the community due to the, uh, the, the, the virus. Certainly, most of the calls and emails that I received over the last number of days have been from people expressing their concern about the fish plant opening, opening up during a state of emergency. I am adding my voice to other organizations and individuals to respectfully request that your company consider keeping the plan closed until the threat of COVID-19 has disappeared. Currently, we need to ensure that the health and the safety of residents is the priority. 
the introduction of temporary workers to the community would potentially increase the risk of uh, the spread, even if they self-isolate upon arrival. Any additional strain on the healthcare system is a challenge that the community can ill afford. This is a letter that I never thought that I would have to write. The community and I have deep appreciation for the economic impact that Pesci Shedika Fisheries International has on the, uh, on the area. Regretfully, the, the, the virus has changed the world we live in, and the focus now has to be on taking prudent steps to protect the people of District 1. Regards, Alfred Poirier, District 1. And as I might also state, uh, Paula, uh, last week, I'm Vice President of the Senior Homes for Inverness County and of course, counselor for Shadikam, where the foyer Pierre is in my district. Mona Poirier, the administrator called me and she said, Alfred, you know, I had a request for a letter stating, you know, support to have the fish bank closed because, you know, of the, the the virus and uh, how, you know, I just want to let you know and what you think. So if I can, should go ahead. So we discussed and it didn't take too long. And Mona has a letter on behalf of the Fayette Perfizet, you know, to the regards of this virus. Also, I like to say that the Fayette Perfizet is free from this virus. But as we speak now, the, you, we all here in Ontario, even some in our province, in senior or long care homes are having a very major problem. I don't want to hear that two three or even 14, 15 have passed because of myself being negligent or trying to do the utmost that I could do for these seniors in the senior home. And also, at this point in time, I would like to give a call to all the healthcare workers, you know, the doctors, and I mean, the healthcare workers cover a lot of people, all the volunteers. I just got out from a call with 14 organizations in my, in our community, talking about community aid, from social services, to fire department, search and rescue, community matters, and a group of organized people who are working with the municipality to support and work a program for the long run, because the marathon is not finished yet. Also, I would like, at this time, I don't think we have a virus at the hospital. But they're there waiting for one of us or some of them that are ready. They're ready for us if something does happen, like all the people that I just talked about before. But at this time, all the people that are at the senior home, you have my voice. And you have my voice because we, one day, if we live long enough, we will be in this situation. 
and also the people that care for all our seniors in the senior room at this point in time that sometimes have to sleep away from their family because they're scared to uh, spread or get the virus. It's a major challenge to all of us. It's not a time to uh, start uh, talking about he said, she said. It's a time to get together. It's a time to pray for those that want to pray and look after us and look after the front uh, line workers. Because you, we all know if something hits Shetty Cat like it had hit somewhere else, it will be a disaster. So what can you do as the person in charge of senior homes in Inverness County? What can you do to make sure this doesn't happen? Well, I tell you what, Paula, it is very myself and the county and the councillors. We have uh, another manor in Inverness and two other option homes in the Mabu and Port Hood. The only thing we have to be is to be very careful and what we do as a council is put faith in the frontline workers with all the administrators and everybody working in those homes. We put our trust in them because they are the people that know and will work and will carry the load if it ever comes up to a point that we have this virus spread out across the county. And what does the municipality do to support these frontline workers? As far as the municipality itself, we have a plan that we move around, but we have our CAO who's in constant, you know, in touch with uh, the Department of Health, you know, and all the people. But like I said, I think it's all the healthcare, you know, professionals. You know, we're not the people that knows how to handle people if we get the case of, uh, of uh, COVID-19 in Shadikam. We have the professionals, but there's one thing that we can do. We can listen, we can talk, and we can help if anything is possible. But sometimes a counselor can't save a life. But a lot of these people front by, like the senior home and the hospital, will be there. And it's to make sure that if they're missing equipment or medicine or anything to fulfill, fulfill their duties, well, I think that is the time that we should be contacted, and that's when the municipality should be coming in and work with them. The councillor made a request to people writing to him on Facebook. If you have any question, you just call me. I always say, call me. I don't want to discuss on Facebook. I have an email. I have a message. I have texts. Please do it the professional way that we nobody knows about it. That's how I do my work. And because words hurt and like anybody else, it does I hurt myself, it hurt my family, and we don't wanna go there. And because we are in a crisis. And not only this, because we're doing this now. But in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks down the road, things are not going to be any better because I'm going to be under a lot of pressure and everybody else is going to be under a lot of pressure. But I would say don't put the blame on everybody else. Look yourself in the mirror and let's say, what can I do for Shattercamp and the people?
and everywhere else in the county and in Pleasant Bay and Meepole in my district. So I think that's my uh, my uh, intake for what I think about it. And uh, I hope to Jesus that we can stay safe and that we can uh, be able, I don't know when, to come back and uh, say, uh, you know, well, it'd be, back. it'd be nice to go see our grandsons instead of giving them their Easter bunnies on the step and then you leave, and, you know, and they can't even get a hug. So hopefully we'll all go through it, but there's only one way we can go through it, is by getting together, not divide. If we're divided, things are going to get worse. So let's work together, let's do it together, and Shadikam will come stronger and stronger. And again, the health care service and all the volunteers, the co-op and the pharmacy credit unions, I know I'm going to miss some, but at the same time, thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't forget that you can send us your questions at chne.television at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.